Hallelujah, Lord, we thank you. Hallelujah, we come together, Lord God, on one accord tonight, Father. Hallelujah, to tell you thank you. Hallelujah, Lord God. We enter in, Father, by a new and living way that was consecrated for us. We thank you, Lord God, for the blood today. Hallelujah, we come before your, your throne boldly, Lord God. Hallelujah, knowing, Lord God, that you hear us when we pray. You hear us, oh God, when we call upon you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, so we invoke your presence tonight, oh God. Hallelujah, Lord God. Hallelujah, we give you free reign in this place tonight, Father. Hallelujah, Lord God. We decrease now, oh God, that you may increase in us, Father. Have your way in this place, holy God. Glory to your name, Father. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God. For this is the day, Lord God, that you have made. We will continue to rejoice and be glad in it. We thank you right now, Lord God, for keeping us throughout the day, Father. Hallelujah. As we rubbed elbows with the world, Father, we thank you, Lord God, for your shield of protection today, Lord God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God, for covering us. Oh, bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. We thank you right now, Lord God, for keeping us, God. Hallelujah. From all dangers seen and unseen, Lord God, we thank you right now, Lord God, for loving us enough, hallelujah, to rescue us. Hallelujah. Not only, Lord God, from this world, not only from the cares of this world, Lord God, but from ourselves. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you right now, Lord God. Creating us a clean heart, oh God, and renew a right spirit in us right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we decrease. We decrease, oh God, in your presence in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you counted not robbery to come and sup with us tonight. Hallelujah. We invite you in, oh God. Hallelujah. We open up our hearts, oh God, and our minds. We come against all distractions right now in Jesus' name. Anything that will take away, Lord God, or keep, it, keep us, Lord God, for getting in your presence, Lord God. We lay it down now. We thank you, Lord God, that you are a forgiving God. And right now, God, we repent. If there's anything, Lord God, that's in us that's not like you, we ask you, oh God, to have mercy. According to your loving kindness, Father, according to the multitude of your tender mercies, blot out our transgressions, oh God. Wash us thoroughly from our iniquities. Cleanse us from our sins, for we were shaped in iniquity, oh God. And in sin did our mothers conceive us. But you, oh God, you desire truth. In our, in our inward parts and in our hidden parts, you maketh us to know wisdom. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, for your grace, Father, and your mercy. They are new every morning. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you're not holding our sins against us. Hallelujah, Father. And we give you glory. We give you glory, Lord God, for redeeming us. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord God, for setting us free. We give you glory, Lord God, for washing us, Father. Hallelujah. We give you glory, Lord God, for translating us. Hallelujah. Into the kingdom of your dear son. Father, we give you glory. Hallelujah. For being who you are in our lives. Hallelujah, Lord God. You are the king of glory. Hallelujah. You are king. All hail the king. We bow before the king today. Hallelujah, Lord God. You are majesty. Hallelujah. Dominion and power. Hallelujah, Lord God. You are El El Yon. You are the most high God. Glory to your name, Father. You are El Shaddai. You are the all-sufficient God. Hallelujah. Everything that we need, oh God. Everything that we want, oh God. It's in you. It's in 
in this place tonight, Father, because you are in this place. Hallelujah. Greater is he that is on the inside of us than he that is in the world. We thank you right now, Lord God, that you dwell on the inside of us, Father. We thank you right now, Lord God, that we dwell in you in the name of Jesus. We thank you, oh God, that nothing can separate us from your love. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, Father. You are the great shepherd. Hallelujah. You lead and you guide us into all truth. Hallelujah. You lead us. Hallelujah. Beside still waters. You lead us, oh God, into green pastures. Glory to your name, God. Green pastures, Father. Where there is no lack and there is no want. Glory to your name, Father. We thank you right now, Lord God, that every one of our needs are met. You are Jehovah Jireh. We are out of debt. We have plenty more to put in store. We thank you right now, Lord God. Hallelujah, that you give seed to the sower. And we are sowers in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, we have more than enough to give to every good work and charitable donation. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah, that men will give into our bosom. Hallelujah, thank you, Lord God, that the blessings of the Lord run us down and overtake us. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God, that provisions shall be clearly seen in our houses in Jesus' name. There's nothing missing, nothing lacking, and nothing broken. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for being the great I am. Hallelujah, Jesus. Everything, Lord God, that we need, everything that we want, oh God, it's in you. Glory. Hallelujah, Lord God. You said I am that I am. Hallelujah. You are our shield, oh God. You are our buckler, Father. You are our bridge over troubled waters. Hallelujah, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. That we can stand on the bridge and look at the water. Glory to your name, Father. Hallelujah. You are our hiding place. Glory, glory, glory. He said, he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. We thank you, Lord God, that we are hidden under your wings. Glory. We thank you, Lord God, that nothing and no one can pluck us. Hallelujah, shot from your hand. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord God. Glory, glory, glory. You are Jehovah Sabaoth. You are the Lord of hosts. We thank you, Lord God, that you fight every one of our battles. Glory to your name, Father. We announce our awareness of you, O oh God, that cannot deny you access. We need you. We need you tonight, O oh God. Oh, yes, God. Hallelujah. Every battle. You said, oh God, that the battle is not ours. It belongs to you. So, God, we need you. Every battle, Lord God, that we face in our mind, every battle, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that you fight for us. We thank you, Lord God, that you go to bat for us. We thank you, Lord God, that we can depend on you. We rely, we depend, we trust in you with all of our hearts. And God, we acknowledge you in all of our ways. And we ask you, oh God, to direct our path, Father. Oh God, you said, Lord God, that if any man lack wisdom to ask you of a Lord God, and you give it liberally, upbraideth not. So, Father, we ask you for wisdom. In our affairs, in the name of Jesus, we ask you for wisdom as we build this ministry, God. We ask you for wisdom, oh God, as we build in our homes. We ask you for wisdom, Lord God. Hallelujah. As to how to raise and uproar our children. We ask you for wisdom, oh God. How to have successful marriages. We ask you for wisdom, Father. Hallelujah. How to minister, Lord God, under the anointing. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. 
for wisdom. Glory, glory, glory. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. That we are wise. We are wise. We are healthy, wealthy, and wise. Glory to your name. Say that. Say, I'm healthy, wealthy, and wise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord God. Oh, yeah, you can give God praise right there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is Jehovah Rapha. He is the Lord God, our healer. He said that he wished above all things that we prosper and be in health, even as to the same degree as our souls prosper. So it's okay to be wealthy. It's okay to be wise. It's okay to be healthy. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, that we are all three. Glory to your name, Father. And we thank you, Lord God, that we are blessed to be a blessing till all the families of the earth are blessed. Hallelujah, Lord God. Glory, glory, glory. Hallelujah. Father, we lift up your word tonight. We thank you, Lord God, that your word has the ability to build us up and give us our inheritance in you. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, that your word is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. The entrance of your word gives light. We thank you right now, Lord God, that because of your word, we will not stumble and we will not fall. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for illuminating our pathways. Father, we pray right now that the anointing will rest upon your word tonight. We thank you right now, Lord God, that lives will be changed. Hallelujah. Your people will receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save our souls, which is able to change the way that we think. Father, we thank you right now. Hallelujah. For the anointed vessels, Father, the willing and obedient vessels, Father, that you will use tonight, Lord God, to bring forth your word. Father, we ask you right now, Lord God, to speak through our vocal cords and think through our mind that word which you would have for your people tonight. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, hallelujah, that we will say, Lord God, what you tell us to say in the name of Jesus. And we will not grieve your spirit this night in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you and we give you glory, honor, and praise. Hallelujah. Bless you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody clap your hands and give God praise tonight. Lord, we love you and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for what you're doing in this house. We honor you and give your name praise. You are worthy, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on, real quick. Y'all make some noise for the Lord. He's good. Amen. Father, we love you and we thank you, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. We come into your presence with singing. We enter your gates with thanksgiving into your courts with praise, God. We thank you, Lord Jesus, that we have full access to you, Lord God, that the veil was rent in two, and that we have access to your throne. We love you, Lord Jesus, for the vastness of who you are in our lives, God, that you sit high and you look low. You know the end from the beginning, God, and we love you for that, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you're not bound to time, space, or matter, but you exist outside of it, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord Jesus, for you being so big in our lives. Hallelujah. Come on, somebody shout, he's a big God. God. Say it again, he's a big God. God. All right, y'all know this one. We're going to go in, and we're going to give him praise tonight. Amen? Hey, hey, everybody, give him praise. Let me see you rock. Hey. Uh Uh-huh. Yo. Uh-huh. Yo. Yo. Let me see you step with it. That's good. <laughs> All right, y'all, real quick, just for fun. Y'all say this after me. Sing oh. oh, oh. Sing oh. oh, oh. So mighty, 
love you, Lord God, and we give your name praise. He's a big God, and we love him tonight. Because there's nothing my God cannot do. Uh -huh. There's nothing my God cannot do. Come on, y'all got to look at your circumstance for that. There's nothing my God can Come on, look at your bank account and say it. Listen, huh? there's nothing my God can I want you to look at your bill that came short this month and say, there's nothing my God can Look at your spouse that wasn't acting right before church and say, there's nothing Look at that child in the back that ain't getting saved. Tell him, there's nothing my God cannot do. Come on, give him the hit with it. Sing it. There's nothing my God can Nothing my God cannot do. My God can do. Oh, 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 there's nothing yeah. My God can When you're riding in your car this week, just remind yourself. There's nothing my God can Listen, listen, here. Here it is. Sing, my God is big. He's so strong and so mighty. My God, his plans for me. He's worthy in here. He's worthy in here. We love you, Jesus. No guy like our God. No king like our king. Now, I gave you what to do now. Y'all point to it. Give him the hip. <laughs> Anybody love Jesus in here? We can have fun in his presence, amen? Lord, we love you and give you praise tonight. There's no God like you. We love you. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, yeah. Come on, y'all look up to the Lord and say, Lord, I love you more than anything. Is that your declaration to the Lord tonight? Come on, look up to the Lord and tell him, say, Lord, I love you more than anything. Yeah, God. We love you, Jesus. Come on, we're going to make melody to the Lord tonight. Is that all right? Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, simple song. Y'all know it. Tell me. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Sing, Lord, I love you, yeah. Lord, I love you. More than anything. Yeah, y'all got it. Come on, sing it like you mean it. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Yes. We love you, Jesus. Lord, I love you. Come on, fellas. More than anything. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Yeah. More than anything. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord.
Come on, y'all. Let's declare our love for him right here. Come on. Let me hear you. Lift your voice. Come on. Sing, I love you.
Hallelujah. Anybody love God more than anything? Come on, come on, give God praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, we love you more than anything. Come on, that's all right. Come on, give God praise. God, we love you. We praise you. We magnify you. We adore you. We exalt you. We lift you up. Hallelujah, because we love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, come on. Clap your hands, all ye people. Shout out to God with the voice of triumph. Hallelujah. Any triumphant people in the house today? <laughs> I heard somebody say, if you're happy and you know it, then your praise should surely show it. Amen. I guess y'all ain't happy. Okay. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. There we go, there we go, there we go. Amen, 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 amen. Praise God. Well, I'm excited. I'm excited. My, body, my wife got a lot of paraphernalia going on in here. <laughs> but I'm excited to be up here with my wife and all her paraphernalia. Y'all give my wife a hand. <laughs> my wife of 21 years. That's right, right? 21 it is 21. Okay, yeah. 21 years. I love you. I love you. I'm excited. I do love you. You know that, right? Amen. Amen. Oh, he gave you an extra table for all your stuff. Wow, that's that's something. I got you, baby. I got you, baby. You're supposed to be to help me, but I'll help you. All right. We're going to help each other. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Well, we won't, we won't, we won't uh, hold your necessary. time. We got, a, we got a time, but we got an hour to try to get through. Lord have mercy. Nehemiah. <laughs> Amen. Well, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, we just thank you right now for this opportunity to once again dig into your word. We thank you, Father God, that you kept us in the storm. Hallelujah. Come on, give God praise, Lord. You kept us, you kept us, oh God, in the storm. In glory, the storm. glory. You brought us through, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, Hallelujah. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Hallelujah, through every mountain you your name, us over, God. every trial you've seen us through in the name of Jesus. Though the storm ah, has been raging God. in our life, hallelujah, our soul has been anchored in the yes. Lord. So we thank you, Lord. God. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise, Father God, for, for your presence in this place tonight in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, for your anointing that is available to remove every burden and destroy every yoke Jesus. in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that you are here. You are here. You are here. And we are ready, Father God, to hear from you in the name of Jesus. Our right now word in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, let's, let's, let's get us caught up a little bit, uh, caught up a little bit, uh, uh, as last week we were uh, dealing with the storm, amen, that we made it through, amen, once again. So let's do a quick, quick review, quick review, uh, real quick, just to catch us up. So everybody turn to Nehemiah chapter 2, and I want you to see, I want you to see a trend that we need to pick up, what's that? It's a little dark. My wife said it's a little dark. Amen. I guess she wants some light. A little, just a little light. Thank you. Thank you. Woo, glory. Light. The glory. <laughs> and there was light. See? We went back to Genesis with that. Appreciate it. Speaking spirits. Amen. So listen, <laughs> listen, listen. So go to uh, Nehemiah chapter 2, and I want you to see something. I want you to catch something that we need to be able to capture uh, uh, in this series, this build-up series of Nehemiah. All right, first off, you know, in chapter one, Nehemiah found out that the people of God uh, were in distress. They were in distress. And this thing that, that Nehemiah heard, it began to bother Nehemiah. It became a burden. And we talked about what is your burden? What is it that God, what is the mantle that God has placed on you? What is the, the burden that God has put on you? What is the, the strong desire that, you know what, God, 
you put this on me, so maybe there's something that you want me to do. And oftentimes, oftentimes, and I would say, I would venture to say every time, God has put a burden, a mantle on you. That first mantle that God has put on you is for you to pray. It's, it's for us to pray, all right? You may not be called to the uh, 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 area of intercession, but you are an intercessor. Come on now. Come on now. You may not. Hey, is that a gift? Is that listed in Romans chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 12? The intercession. Okay, so we all have been called to the area of prayer, right? You can pray. All right, so when you get that mantle, when something is bothering you, it's not for us to talk about the problem. We just talked about Genesis, right? We just talked about Genesis. When, when, when God saw that it was dark, right, what did God say to the darkness? He said, let there be light. He didn't say, oh, my, 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 me. My, 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 me. Look around us and look around at all this darkness. Don't make no sense to see a whole world just full of darkness. Don't make no sense. No. He spoke to the darkness and said, let there be. Spoke it. Amen? So now, now, this mantle has been placed on Nehemiah, and immediately, if you notice in, in Nehemiah chapter 1, I'm sorry, Nehemiah chapter 1, if you look at verse 4, it says, And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and I wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before God of heaven. You see his immediate response? He prayed. Immediate response is that he prayed. Look over in uh, chapter 2. Verse 19, chapter 2, verse 19, he fasted, he prayed, God gave him a vision, God gave him a plan, God gave him some schematics, God gave him everything that he needed to start the project, including the vision, and all the provision. So this is what you got, this is another point that you got to catch. When God gives you a vision, people of God, he'll give you provision. Amen. Come on now. So look at uh, uh, chapter 2. Chapter 2. And looks, let's look down at verse 19. I'm going to try to skip around so we can catch us back up real quick. He says, For when Sanballat, the Hornite, and Tobiah, the servant, the, and the Ammonite, Jeshim, and the, the Arabian heard it, when they heard about what happened is that in verse 17, he says, let us build the wall. He, he gave the vision to the people. There was a remnant of people that, 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 that was in the foot. <laughs> there was a remnant of people that said, hey, listen, God gave me a vision. God gave me a vision, and, 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 and we about to start this business, and we about to start this church, and we're about to plant, and we're about to build, right? And he gathered the people around, and he said, you know what? He says, we're going we gonna to rebuild this wall because they are in desolation. They are torn down. They are, they are in disgrace. They, there is a need that God has given me a vision and the provision to meet that need. All right? And their response, if you look in verse 17, it says, let us build. So now, verse 19, he says, but to, uh, when they heard it, they laughed us to scorn and despised us and said, what is this thing that you do? Will you rebel against the king? So now they're laughing at him. I got a vision. We finna start. And then Nehemiah prayed. Go to chapter 4. Chapter 4, verse 1. Once again, here it is. Chapter 4, verse 1. He says, but, when, but it came to pass that when Samballot heard that we builded the wall, he was very upset. Very upset. All right, so now you got the enemy attacking the vision. The enemy trying to attack the vision. We're just talking about it. We're just talking about it. The enemy trying to already get us discouraged. But Nehemiah prayed. Nehemiah didn't even respond to them. Nehemiah had something sharp to say to him initially. And then he said, we're finna build. So, so the enemy already, before, they even, before you even get it off the ground, when God wake you up in the morning and give you an idea, you can't sleep, I had a dream, I had a vision, God told me to write that down. Before they even started building, the enemy already trying to attack. So what this needs to tell you, what you need to understand about this is you need to be prepared for the attack. But fortify yourself 
and learn how to deal with the attack. Because I know it's coming, it is what it is. But we already know no weapon formed against me shall prosper. And every tongue that rises up against me in judgment shall be. Come on now. All right, so now here it is. Here it is. But it came to pass, verse, chapter 4, verse 1, when Sam Ballard heard that we done started building. We done started building. Now you're real, man. And Nehemiah prayed. Go, go, chip skip one more time to verse 7. Chapter 4, verse 7. Hear, O God. I'm sorry. It says, but it came to pass that when Sam Ballard and Tobiah and, and, and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashtadites heard that the walls of Jerusalem was made up. Now we done built half the wall. We had a vision. They was upset. The enemy was upset. We started building. They actually, oh, they actually done started with their little vision. Their little vision that they got. Enemy real upset. Oh, you're going to really start with your little business. Your little business that you got. I know you got your little vision and you're going to start. <laughs> Whatever. Oh, oh, you went on ahead and did it anyway. <laughs> it ain't going to work. A fox going to climb up on that little business that you got and, and tear it down. You going to be out of business in, in a matter of months. Oh, it's going to be months. You still going? Okay, you thriving with your little business. Okay, okay, okay. You done got you a new booth. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, you done sold you a couple of houses. Oh, okay, okay. All right. Oh, you got you a few clients. Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> enemy mad. Why is the enemy mad, though? Why would he be upset? See, the enemy wouldn't be upset if you wouldn't be making impact. The enemy wouldn't be upset if you would not be changing a generation. If you would not be about to. Did I say that okay? Be about to? If you wouldn't be, a, if you wasn't about to, help me teach it, uh, 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 change a generational curse of poverty. If you was about to break a generational curse, if you wasn't about to do that, then the enemy would be upset. Go ahead with your little business. I ain't got nothing to say. Do your little thing then. But if you're about to change a life, if you're about to make impact on someone's life and their livelihood, minds are about to be renewed from a broken place because there's a people that's in a place that's in a rut and God has put a burden on me to come back to it. This should sound familiar to some of us. God has put a burden on me to come back to a place to do something about it. God has put a word in me. God has put a passion. This, does this sound familiar? Am I, am I talking in cold? Are we catching? Are y'all catching what I'm putting down? God has put a word on the inside of me, a passion and a drive, a vision on the inside of me to come back to a place and unload a word. Come on now. Does it sound, do, do, do y'all know what I'm talking about? Okay, so, so God called me to do such a thing and Oh, 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 you look. little, that's going to, enemy upset. You look. little, mm-hmm. Now, go to chapter 6. Chapter 6, verse 1. I'm just skipping ahead real quick. Chapter 6, verse 1, it says, Now it came to pass when Sam Bala, Tobiah, the Jeshim, the Arabian, and the rest of our enemies heard that I had built the wall. Okay? When they heard that we built the wall, they're real upset. Now, I took us from the beginning, and I already jumped all the way to chapter 6. Can you talk to us, my beautiful bride, about chapter 5? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, <Sure>. so <laughs> in chapter 5, mm -hmm. um, basically it's a, it's a look within the walls, okay? Um, up until now... You know, we've talked, they've talked about, you know, how to build a wall, you know, the vision that God gave and everything. But um, chapter five is a look inside of the walls because we know that, you know, when we build something or say, for instance, the church, we can build these walls. But there are things that go on on the inside of the walls. OK, so we're going to do this um, line by line. Precept upon precept. <laughs> and I'm going to tell y'all first um, off bat. Um, 
every time I read this, I get mixed up or whatever, because like Pastor Cheryl said on Sunday, some of us wrote this. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And it is like, it is like Ebonics. <laughs> we good, we good. You'll see when we read it. Okay, so we'll start off. And it says, there was a great cry of the people and of their wives against their brethren, the Jews. For there were that that said, we are sons and our daughters are many. Therefore, we take up corn for them that we may eat and live. Some also that were, there were that said, we have mortgaged our lands, vineyards, and houses that we might buy corn because of the dearth. Okay? Dearth means scarce, scarcity if you, don't, if you didn't know. It says there were also that said, we have borrowed money for the king's tribute and that upon our lands and vineyards. Yet now our flesh is as the flesh of our brethren, our children as their children, and lo, we bring into bondage our, son, bondage our sons and our daughters to be servants. Jesus. And some of our daughters are brought unto bondage already. Wow. Neither is it in our power to redeem them, for other men have our lands and vineyards. Wow. And I was very angry when I heard their cry in these words. Then I consulted with myself. <laughs> we'll go back to that. Then I consulted with myself and I rebuked the nobles and the rulers and said unto them, You exact usury, every one of his brother, and I said a great assembly against them. Okay, let me pause real quick. And I know you got something. I'm sorry. I just asked you to talk. But I want y'all to catch something. <laughs> I love you, babe. You good? Okay, there you go. Okay. He said, look at verse 1, five, chapter 5, verse 1. Look at this real quick. And I just want y'all to, I need y'all to catch this. And then I'll pass it back. He says, and there was a great crowd of people and their wives against the brother and the Jews. Why were the wives upset? Why? Because there was a wall being built. And we out here working on the wall, not tending to the farm and tending to the, so the wives at home, they working, but they also taking care of the house too. It's some babies that can't work on the wall. It's some babies that can't work on the wall. And so now some of the wives are panicking that, that you know, we, got, we still got to take care of the house. Shout out to the ladies that take care of the house because I don't know what bills got to be paid. I just say, here, baby. All right? <laughs> so shout out to y'all. So now what, what are the bills? The taxes still got to get paid. I don't know what our taxes is. I don't know when they do. Thank you, baby. So now, the taxes still got to get paid, right? The, the, the crops still got to get tended to. We still got to take care of these animals that's at the house. So there's still stuff that's going on at the house. So what you need to capture is there's work being done in the kingdom, but it's the people that's doing the work. It's people that's doing the work. And now, Nehemiah is hearing about the issues with the people. Talk to me. And so in, in verse 6, you'll see it says, and I was very angry when I heard their cry. So in other words, again, he was moved with compassion. And that's what happens when you love your people, right? Okay, now let me explain to you what's going on in the land. So in the land, there's famine, okay? There's a scarcity, okay? Also, the people are having to pay high taxes, okay? And the third thing is um, their brethren. I ain't talking about people outside. I'm talking about the people, your, your family, your, your people are charging them high interest on the things because everybody, their people have to eat. Everybody has to eat. And so those that are in a position, in a higher ranking position to provide um, what they need, the food and things that they need, they're charging them high interest on it, okay? Now we're talking about, like I said, we're talking about your people, okay, in, in, in the house, okay? And so, I got so many glasses, y'all. Um, and so, like I said, again, Nehemiah was moved with compassion. Let me tell you what else is going on. We'll read verse eight, and it says, 
And I said unto them, this is Nehemiah, and I said unto them, we, after our ability, have redeemed our brethren, the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen, and will you ever, will you even sell our, your brethren, or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace and found nothing to answer. And so basically what's going on is he's saying, okay, you're charging these high interest rates to your people. And they can't pay you back. And so basically they're having to sell their homes, sell their land, sell their sons and their daughters into slavery. And so Nehemiah is like, okay, we just did everything that we could to, them, to bring them out of slavery. And you're going to put them back in slavery only for us to have to buy them back from you. I need y'all to catch this. I'm sorry, man. I need y'all to, do you see this? The king's tax, the people couldn't keep up. Excuse me. Some of my people could, my brother, my actual brother couldn't keep up with the bills. And so in order for me to keep up with the bills, I went to my brother, my actual brother, because all of us here building the wall. I went to my actual brother. I'm like, bro, can you give me a little bit of help? Right? And he's like, yeah, 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 I'll give you a loan. And the, the, the interest on it, what was it, 40 to 50%? Way up there. And then they couldn't keep up with the loan. Couldn't keep up with the loan so much so they had to sell, use their sons and their daughters to help pay off some of the debt. They need to know something about using your sons and your daughters that some of them were kind of sold into other kind of slavery right and so now somebody's cousin right because we talk about family cousin is sold into slavery to help pay down some of their debt yeah 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 you can give me some and, and then so so not only will you not get your 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 daughter back you're probably about to lose your house that you use to mortgage off to try to help so now they're about to lose their house they're, like, they're losing a child, family, church folk, people in the body taking advantage of other people in the body. Let me make sure you catch the relation. Church folk taking advantage of other church folk. People within the camp taking advantage of other people in the camp. This is why Nehemiah is real upset. This is what, this is what actually got Nehemiah attention. I need y'all to catch this now because when Nehemiah was building Get this picture. Nehemiah was building, saying, Malin and Tobiah, come down. Man, they ain't coming down. He building. Building. Come on down to meet us. For what? They ain't coming down there. He building. He building. And hey, Nehemiah, your people out there tripping. What? Got his attention. The only thing up to this point, the only thing that stopped work was trouble in the house. Not outside enemies. Not outside enemies. Let's really, because you know how we always say it's the, the, the body, the local body, and the universal body of Christ. The only thing that can stop work is the inner me. When there's issues among us, when there's issues within me, when we fight against ourselves, we're the only ones that can stop us. Remember, the enemy is under our feet. The enemy is defeated, but when we start fighting against each other, a house divided against itself can't stand. We can't build a wall if we go in two different directions. If we got two different sets of blueprints, what are we doing? Come on now, I'm trying to build a mansion, you're trying to build a doghouse. What are we doing? Go ahead. <laughs> I got excited. I got excited. Uh -huh. Yes. <laughs> so, in other words, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> <laughs> so again, <laughs> Nehemiah is moved with compassion. Okay. And so, Nehemiah is like, okay, I can't do anything about the famine. I can't do anything about the 
king's taxes. <laughs> I saw this movie one time that said, um, there's three people I don't fool with. That's the I, the Aura, and the S. So Nehemiah said, I can't, I can't do nothing about that. He said, but what I can do is talk to, to my people, okay? And so he says, well, before we go there, so I asked God, I was like, okay, God, what does, how does this relate to now? And so he said, in the body, a lot of times there are opportunists, okay? And so what I saw was a predator. And you know what a predator is? A predator preys on other people. And so, basically, what they were doing were um, exacting predatory lending. And if anybody, anybody knows anything about, you know, real estate or what have you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read this to y'all, what predatory lending is. Predatory lending is typically, typically means op opposing... Okay, read the <laughs> let, me, let me get my help. Okay. Predatory lending typically means imposing unfair, deceptive, or abusive loan terms on borrowers. In many cases, these loans carry high fees and interest rates, strip the borrower of equity, and place a credit-worthy borrower in a lower credit rated and more expensive loan, all to the lender's benefit. So basically, you're, you're giving your people what they need, but an extremely high interest rate. And so, in the church, we say we love one another, okay? But at the same token, we have, and not in this church, we have predators, we have people who prey on others. We have people who look at your, your circumstance or your situation and say, okay, I need what they got, so I'm going to use them for whatever I need them for. Does not matter what position it's going to put them in. And that's what happened with them. They were opportunists, okay? They saw, they saw an opportunity to come up, and although you're my, they're, you know, they were brothers or what have you, it didn't matter to them that they put them in an even worse position. How do you do that? How do you do that to your brother? But that's what they did. Okay. She's so sick. So, we're going to... You have anything to add? I honey? do. I do. Yes. I was itching. So, what this is in the building industry is red tag. Wait a minute. Stop. This is the only thing that caused Nehemiah to stop, stop. Cut everything, shut everything down. You're Sound for me? Shut down. everything. I'm, I'm in there. Just, just... We got to stop because we, we, you know what? In order for us to continue to build and build right, let's, let's stop and address some stuff. It's important because Here's, here's what we could do. Here's what we could do in the body of Christ, in the local assembly within ourselves, is go on as usual. Overlook it. And then ultimately deal with it later. Build on top of the problem and, 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 and finish the walls and finish the facings and put some paint on it. You still, got, you still got a crack in the foot of, still put the, put the roof on, hang some pictures on the walls. You know, everything is nice. I got everything just looking so nice. And then when the rain hits, when the rain hits, now, now it's being exposed. So let's stop before we, you know, let's, let's stop while we got the red tag, while we got the walls halfway up, because we done started building. You started building. We start, we've living, we're living our lives. We started the business. We started the foundation. We started the nonprofit, all right? But, but something, God, the Holy Spirit has shown me, wait a minute, there's some things you need to address. Don't overlook it. But if you stop, they're going to think that you've given up. But if you stop, they're going to think that, you, that, that you're going backwards. No, I'm addressing some things. 
I'm addressing some things so that when God does bring the breakthrough, when God does bring the increase, I have fortified myself to receive the abundance. Right? Because there's a hole. There's a crack. There's something that's going on that I got to address right now. Red tag. Stop all work. <laughs> Stop all progress. Address this. Okay? So that's what Nehemiah did. Nehemiah actually stopped building to address the issues in the camp. Family. Right? Come on, y'all. Come together. I, we, we had to do this with our sons. Sons just constantly at each other. Okay, constantly at each other. Got two separate rooms. Why y'all at each other? You can go in your room. You can go in your room. What's going on? You know what dad did? Dad took that twin bed, slid it all the way down the hall. Y'all sleeping together. <laughs> Same room. Y'all going to get along. And until I feel like, <laughs> until I feel like y'all best of friends, then you can get your room back. Until then, this is my study for right now. We going to, we got, no, no, no. We can't, we can't go on like this. Y'all constantly at each other. Stop! Give me the game. Give me the headphones. Give me the phone. Come on. You, we, 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 gonna, we coming to come together. Come to Jesus. And if I hear any furniture moving in that room, you're going to be in there longer. Right? Stop. Sometimes we got to address what's going on in the house before we go further. Right? Yes, ma'am. That was it. That was all. For now. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and honestly, that's where we are. Um, addressing the issues yes. and, and because in the building process like we said you can't go any further if you don't address the issues because well I'm getting ahead of myself never mind um, we'll talk about that in a minute but I want you to turn to Proverbs 3 and 27 real quick if you have it say amen if you don't say oh me you ain't even got no Okay, and it says, Withhold not good from them to whom it is due. When it is in your power, in the power of thine hand to do it. So in other words, don't withhold. If you've got something and you know that somebody else needs it and it's not, whether it hurts you or not, but if it's not and it's not going to hurt you, don't withhold it. And then here it says, um, To them who it is due. And I know you're probably saying, okay, well, when they lend, lend it, uh, their brother's stuff, I'll say, um, it wasn't do them, but actually it was. Do you know who they were? Do you know whose people they were? So everything, anything is do them, okay? So it, it will behoove us as Christians, as people of God, um, to follow this word it does not it does not cost you anything really i mean if you got it it doesn't really cost you anything to give to someone else it don't it don't cost a, it don't cost a whole lot to give to somebody else and if it's in your hand he put it in your hand for a reason the bible says that we're blessed to be a blessing and so if you're just holding that blessing guess what you just blessed. You're not being a blessing. You're not being obedient to what he said to do. And I'm looking at um, Pastor, Pike, Pastor Pat and Pastor Mike, and they are generous givers. Okay? And they give, and you, can, you know they, they give from their hearts. And the reason why they can continue to give is because they give. But I want to make sure y'all catch this real quick. Is <laughs> I love you, baby. I want to I'll make sure, because it's not always money. What do you, what do you have an What's abundance in your hand? of? What do you have an abundance of? What has God blessed you with the abundance of? And you may have an abundance of peace. Talk to me, baby. And the thing is, we look at abundance as, you know, I am super wealthy. Abundance is anything over your need. You know what I'm saying? Ooh. Anything over your need, and you see somebody else who has a need, it is for you to sow. Listen, I have peace that surpasses knowledge. I have an abundance of peace. 
I have don't make no sense peace. And you got people walking around in complete uproar. I don't know what I'm going to do. Oh, my gosh. My hair is thin, and I'm about to pull it all out. I can't even grip it, but I'm about to pull it out. Oh, my. Oh, yeah, you saw yeah. <laughs> So that wasn't just an analogy, baby. Okay. You, you called it? It was good, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, uh -huh. <laughs> So now, like, I'm going through it. Going through it, but you have an abundance of peace. Give some peace. Be, bring, bring your shoes of peace and give that to me because when you step on the scene, bring some peace with you. I feel like I'm down and out and I, and I have no hope. You have hope. Why do you have hope? Because you probably share the same testimony. And they feel like they can't overcome this situation they, that they're in. And they shall overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Your testimony. How old are you? 15? There's a 15-year-old that feels like I'm going through something that a fifth, no other 15-year-old is going through. Right? There's somebody that's in your situation that feels as if how, nobody else has gone through the stuff that I've gone through. And here you are sitting with your testimony on the other side with hope. Share the testimony. Share the hope. Because I'm, some people, I was just talking to somebody about this the other day. D. Some people are sitting around hopeless so much so that they're contemplating taking their own life. And as I was talking to somebody, he was like, you know what? I contemplated taking my own life. Dot, 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 but God. And here you are with all this hope and all this, all this overcoming power on the inside of you, and you got somebody else. Wow, look at my brother in the house. I love this young man right here. I'm sorry. Listen, here you are on the other side of this. You know, with all this hope, and that's what you have. That's covenant. That's covenant. I see, a, I see an opportunity, a weakness. I have hope. She doesn't have hope. Let me bring you some hope, baby. Can I hope you? You got hope. Let me hope you. <laughs> Oh, you don't want me to? You don't want no hope to? No. I hope to though. If you I, need, I help you. I hope to. You hope? I help them. They don't need. Okay. Right, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> okay, so moving on. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going to start. Go back to verse nine, and it says, "Also, I said." Oh, let me let me let me go back. Mm -hmm. It says the end of this says. Uh, Verse 8 says, then held they their peace and found nothing to answer. So basic, basically, crickets. When he, when he brought correction, there was nothing for them to say because they knew in their heart of hearts that they were wrong. Okay? And it says, also I said, it is not, it is not good that ye, ye do. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen or enemies? And I thought about this, and I'm like, okay, we can stop at fear of our God. Ought ye not to walk in the fear of our God? Should we not walk in the fear of our God? It doesn't matter what our enemy is going to say or what our enemies think. We're serving God. We're building unto God. Everything that we do must be done heartily as unto God and not unto man. And so we go on down and he says, Likewise, I likewise, and my brethren, and my servants, my exact of them money and corn, I pray you, let us leave off this usury. Let us leave off this high interest. So in other words, Nehemiah is saying, you know, I lend it, I lend to our brothers and our sisters too, but I don't charge them no high interest like that. He says, restore, I pray thee. No, I ain't going to read it out out of the King James. In the <laughs> Amplified, Nehemiah was so mad, he said, how many of you know you, sometimes you just have to take authority over things? And Nehemiah was so upset because he loved the people. He loved his people. And he felt like everybody else should love one another the same way that he loved. And he says, return this very day to them their fields, vineyards, olive groves, and houses, and also a hundred of all, all the money, grain, new wine, and oil that you have exacted from them. 
In other words, give them people back their stuff. Stop being greedy and giving them people back their stuff because what you're doing is unnecessary. What you're doing is unnecessary and you're only hurting your people. And guess what? What you do unto them, you do unto God. These are God's people. He says, so give those people back their stuff and stop being greedy. He says, then said they, we will restore them. <laughs> Quick obedience. We will restore them and will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou sayest. Then I called the priests and took the oath of them that they should do according to the promise. Also, and if you remember, not long ago, Pastor Cheryl and Pastor Early, you know, um, that Sunday had everybody come up and, you know, basically, it was basically giving an oath, giving a promise, not unto them, unto God. That says, you, you, this work that you started, he said, I, I will complete it. You know, and it's not just the work that they started because there were people that's, that were with them when they started. And somehow or another, you know, things happen. Things happen. Say things happen. Okay. And he says, they took the oath. And he says, also, I shook my lap and said, so God shake every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not this promise. Even thus, to be shaken out and emptied. And all the congregation said, what? Amen. Amen. And praise the Lord. And the people did according to this promise. you have anything to add, sir? <laughs> Amen. You got it. You got it. Amen. Okay. And so, right there, there, there are a few things that, you know, God showed me. And one is, when you're building... When you're building something for God, understand that issues come to your house, okay? And they, and they did that with these people. And in their personal lives, they begin to suffer. But God is saying, okay, in this, in this life, in this world, you will have tribulation. You're going to have issues. He said, but be of good cheer. He said, I've overcome them all. So understand that because then you can just imagine, you know, how they felt. They, you know, we're building this thing for God, and yet we're suffering. We can't find, we ain't got no food. We ain't got no money. What was that song? Um, how you going to pay the rent? All your money spent. Work it out. That's what they were saying. And so, you know, they're saying, you know, we're building this thing for you, God. And, and we're lacking. We're suffering. I want to say something. I'm sorry. I need y'all to catch this too now. Because sometimes we, 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 we get some, some things twisted. Okay. Nehemiah had righteous indignation. Because the brothers wasn't treating the brothers right. We wasn't treating our own people right. And we was taking advantage of our own people. So just like my sons... All right, because usually it was one of the sons that typically started it off. I didn't say to the son that typically starts it off, you know what, son, you got to go. I don't care if you're 15 years old, you got to go. Get out my house. You are no longer my son. Then nobody got excommunicated. They just got, there was just an accountability they got dealt with. They just got dealt they, There was a correction. There was a correction and a, a, a circumstance and, and, and a consequence. No, no, no. We got to fix this, right? So likewise, the people who were taking advantage of the people who were less fortunate, Nehemiah didn't kick them out. They went right back to work. He just addressed them as a good leader should. Good leaders have accountability, have good communication. Hey, wait a minute. Right? I, I expect brothers and sisters to have a little every now and then. Everything, gonna go, is, is, everything in a household, in the, in the body of Christ, ain't going to be perfect all the time. Can we expect that there is going to be some tips here and there? Excuse me, some misunderstandings here and there? 
Because oftentimes in the body of Christ, there's a misunderstanding because I thought you meant, I thought you said, I saw your face, and you look like you, and ain't nobody even said nothing to each other. And then we move on, we move on thinking that you didn't say something to me. I ain't even see you. Look at you. You, you think you're all that because you had on your new outfit and you ain't even want to speak to me. Wait a minute, I ain't even see you. I understand Pastor Sharon might not see me sometimes because she's 6'2". two. I get it. And it'd be dark in here. And then if I wear them all black, you know, it look like it look like words are just floating. I get it. She might not have seen me that day. So I can't take it personal. Right? <laughs> oh, you see what I'm saying? So, like, there's a lot of things that goes unsaid, and then, and then this begins to happen. The love. Love assumes the best. I assume the best, but sometimes this flesh and this mind, and we don't pull down that, that thought that tries to exalt itself, but we're not operating in love, and we begin to think and, and then move as if it's real. Sometimes it is real, though. Sometimes it is real, just like this. They, they taxing their people. But Nehemiah, did, Nehemiah was very upset. So much so that he stopped building. But he didn't kick them out. Hey, 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 we got to stop this. We got to stop this. We got to put this to an end. We got to stop this. Now, come on down. Come on down. Y'all in this? Now, now y'all said we're going to arise and build. Y'all still with me now. We still remember the, the let's go back. To what our original goal was. Y'all still with this? We still in this thing? Y'all get this? Because what we doing now, this, hey, wait a minute now. Voice might get a little elevated, but that's called righteous ending. Jesus flipped over some tables, and he should have. Right? Nehemiah addressing some people, and like he should have, like a good leader should. All right, I got some parents in the house. Is some stuff going on in y'all house? We don't just sit back and just say, I hope, I hope they stop arguing soon. Wait, hey, right? I heard, I see videos all the time where, where the dad would just say one word and it's, hey, right? And everybody know, let me stop before hey turn into something else, right? <laughs> Sometimes that's all it take, right? Because they know something else. If you're in my house, something else may follow behind that. If y'all, okay, all right, all right. <laughs> so, go ahead, baby. Did I take too long? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to read it for the sake of time. Yes. First Peter 4, 12 says, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fire trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you and he says it's because you I've already told you that you're gonna have trials you're gonna have tribulation I've already told you so don't think it's strange he said but but rejoice inasmuch as you are partakers of Christ's suffering that when his glory shall be revealed ye may be glad also with exceeding joy he says if ye be reproached for the name of Christ happy are ye happy are ye for the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you <laughs> the spirit of God the spirit of glory and of God resteth upon you so you can be happy on their part he is I'm sorry on their part he is evil spoken of but on your part he is glorified but let none of you suffer as a murderer or as a thief or as an evildoer, or as a busybody in other men's affairs or matters. Yet if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. And I'm going to read 17 through 19 through the Message Bible. It says, it's judgment time for God's own family. That's where we are. We are first in line. If it starts with us, think what it's going to be like for those who refuse God's message. If good people barely make it, what's in store for the bad? So if you find life difficult, 
please, please, because you're doing what God said, take it in stride. Trust him. He knows what's, what he's doing, and he'll keep on doing it. So just know that as you're building, as you're working for the kingdom, things happen. Things are going to happen in your life. But the, ish, the, the thing is, how will you go through it? The Bible says, be of good cheer, for he has overcome all of that. So we can't walk around, woe is me. We can't walk around angry because we're going through something. He says, be of good cheer. And this is how you know that the glory of God is upon you. This is how you know that God is working on the inside of you because you're of good cheer. People can know you're going through something and not see it on you. When that song say, I'm glad I don't look like what I've been through or what I'm going through, it's possible. Okay. Okay. And so the second thing um, he said, he said, um, it's a sad indictment on the people when the people struggle, but the church organization prospers. Again, it's a sad indictment when the people struggle, but the organization that we call the church prospers, the building prospers. It's not enough for the organ, organization to prosper. Because technically, may, it's not technically, we are the church. And so if the building or the organization is prospering, the people should be prospering. Amen? And I will say this, because I know the heart of our pastors. They don't like to see anybody suffer. Okay? And God has given them, given them this ministry, this vision. And so when their people suffer or their people are lacking, they're moved with compassion to do something. And they should be because that's the call that God has placed on their life. What's, but, awesome, what's awesome is that what we have to realize is that we're in this together. And what, what they need to be able to do is have resources in who? In us. Look around us. We're the resources. We're the resources. We're the resources that make this thing work. We're the resources that causes covenant. I use this analogy all the time. So say these, this is me, and these are my strengths. This is me, and these are my strengths. This is somebody else, and this is their strengths. Everywhere you see an opening is a weakness, all right? But when we come together, where's the weakness? That's what covenant looks like. I have the ability to meet a need in your life, and you have an ability to meet a need in my life, and you, I'm, I'm low on my love, and you got a whole lot of love to give, and I'm low on my funds, and you may, may have a lot of funds to give or have enough that may help me out. So it's not as if, because... So, to take advantage of somebody goes both ways. Goes both ways. Not only on the people that's taxing the people, but the people that's taking. Constantly taking. That's taking advantage too. Faith without works is dead. Men that don't work no eat. So it's like it can go both. The, take, the, the, the taking advantage of can go both ways. Right? Look at the book of Acts. And they gave and there was no lack. And they gave and there was no lack because they were in covenant with each other. We working to build the kingdom and go forward, but I'm looking to help meet a need in your life also. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. And so then um, the, pro, the provision for the vision or the building back then, it came from the royal treasury. And so the people, you know, so there was provision for this for the building but they were lacking in their homes and so you know again they were like okay they were crying out saying okay well what are we gonna do you know we don't have what we need and so Nehemiah came with a solution and the solution was stop charging them interest and so God is saying for this work 
like I said, it, it's a sad indictment when, when the people are struggling. But the thing with that is, God says, I will supply all of your needs. Okay? He's not a man that he should lie. He's not a man. Okay? So he's not lying. So what's going on is, he's providing the need, but the issue is, you're doing something else with the seed that he's giving you. He said that he will give seed to the sower. So guess what? Eventually, that seed will dwindle down if you're not using it for what he's, he's commanded you to use it for. If you're not sowing it, he's not going to give, right, he's not going to give you that seed. Okay, so now he's saying, okay, I'm not a man that I should lie. I'm providing. I'm the provider. I'm providing. So basically, what you need to do is Check your investments. Check your spending habits. Check your connections. What are you connected to? Because sometimes we're connected to things that, are, that will bleed us dry. And you don't even know it until, you, until everything you got is gone. And so he said, what are you connected to? What are you investing your time what are you investing your mind? What are you investing your energy and your finances to? Jesus. Because there's no way that his people will lack. Word says, I never seen the righteous forsaken nor a seed begging bread. Why are you begging? Why are you lacking? It's not because I haven't provided. Wow. Wow. So we, I mean, he, he said, you know, it's a sad indictment on the on the church or the organization, but we as the people, as a church, we don't get off that easy. We can't blame it on the organization because God is providing for us individually. Amen. I'm going to move, move on from there. Okay, last thing he said was, Pastor Kevin has already mentioned it, is the only time that the work stopped was during ministry. When, they had, when he had to bring correction. My husband, on my way to work, on my way to work, there's always, I work in Zephyr Hills, and so there's always, um, what do you call it? Construction trucks and dump trucks and dirt trucks. <sighs> so aggravating. So aggravating. So my husband, he showed me a different <laughs> way to work, right? My husband is the king of, I'm going to find another way. My husband is the king of, I'm going to take the back road to wherever. <laughs> I, don't, I don't like that. I need to be on the main. So if anything happens, somebody can see me. I don't want to be back in the, uh, in the, in the boondocks <laughs> with the good old boys. Anyhow. So anyway, I'm right to work. And on this, on this back road... A few days. I heard she took the back road. Yes, I took the back road <laughs> because <laughs> because it was clear. Uh -huh, uh -huh. You know, the first few times I took it, it was clear. But these particular days, there were construction trucks on this back road, and they were like spread out. They weren't, you know, together like they were working together. They're all spread out, so it agitated me because I had to keep going in and out, in and out. Okay. And so the Holy Spirit says, there will always be construction. Likewise, in the body, there will always be construction. There will always be something that we have to work on. And he also brought this analogy. He said, you think about a, an older house and, you know, this city of code enforcement or whatever, when you have issues with that house, what is it called? Violations. When you have violations or red tape, you know, with that house. Um, and they give you a certain amount of time to deal with it. Okay? If you don't deal with it, they give you, you know, chance after chance after chance. And eventually, they do what? They condemn it. Right? Okay. And so basically, he says, that's what the church does. 
He says, I, you know, I put out these red tapes. I put out these, you know, these uh, areas of correction and you don't deal with it. And so what happens is you pile this on top of this, this on top of this, on top of this. And before you know it, you condemn yourself. Because it weighs heavy on you. Because he says, um, therefore, there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. He does not condemn, but we condemn. Okay? And so we get to a place where we can't go any further in the church unless we deal with things. Okay? We have to learn how to receive correction. And in Nehemiah, we'll go back there real quick. I'll use yours. Nehemiah 5, and I think it's. What? What, what is it? <laughs> okay. Nehemiah 5 and 13. Let's see. And it says, at the very end of this, it says, and all the, after he brought the correction and everything, he said, and all the congregation said, Amen. And praise the Lord. So he says, when you get the correction, it's not for you to be angry. It's not for you to be mad. It's not for you to get depressed. It's not for you to stop serving. It's not for you to not sing anymore. It's not for you to not work in the sound booth or not play the instruments. He said, receive the correction. And what did they do? They received the correction and they praised. He said, because I'm doing this for your good. So in other words, God, I messed up. I'm sorry. Thank you for bringing the correction. Thank you for getting me straight. We have to learn how to receive correction. Wow. That is completely, wow. Baby, wow. 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 <laughs> but think about when a child gets correction, right? When a child gets correction, it's... Right? Go in your room and close your door real soft because you can't, you, can't you can't slam the doors in my mama's house. So, and then you go in the room and you, you start punching and swinging the pillows and throw a hissy fit. And, you know, then your mama come open the door. I heard what you in here doing. Nothing. Right? So you in there pouting. Because you just got corrected, whereas this people, the people of God, took correction and began to praise my God. It, it, it caused a praise. Think about that. Because I was once in a path that was leading to he death, hell, destruction. I was on the wrong path. And God put sound leadership in my way, in my path, someone to bring correction, and it began to cause a praise to bubble up on the inside of me. Not man bump y'all. Man, I quit. Forget all y'all then. You want to bring correction in my life. You want to tell me what Holy Ghost told you to tell me. Forget all y'all. That don't make sense, does it? That's good, baby. You better go ahead on and preach. Oh, Lord. Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> wow. So there's a there's a to build and to minister. Mm -hmm. So they build they built he ministered. Mm -hmm. There's a balance. There's a balance and we going we going what time we going to close yeah, it up. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. And so every week I come in here and I look at this this thing right here. Love this board right here. And I don't know if you know what this is, but this is called a level. Uh -huh. Okay. And a level, if you take this level. And, level. And, uh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. If you take this level. <laughs> so you see these blocks are built or what have you. You take this level and sit it on this block. You see these? I don't know if you can see it or not. These little bubbles right here. If this is level, 
if it's straight, these bubbles will be in the middle. Okay? Uh -huh. You see how this is turned? So now you know that it <laughs> you know that it's not straight because this bubble is at the end. Mm -hmm. And so that's where God wants us. He wants us to have some balance. He wants us to be able to, because the, the thing is with this, though, if you put this level on here and it's not right, that means there's something wrong somewhere. Mm. That means that something is off balance, okay? Mm. And so depending on where it is, you might have to tear the whole thing down. And I think we talked about that already. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you can tell them a little more about the level, but that, that's, that's really all I know. But, <laughs> but, I know, but I know that, and I know that because my, we had a construction business. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I go out there every now and then and tinker with stuff like I knew what I was doing. And, and there are times that I would go out there when we first started. I would go out there and looking at different houses. Now, when you're doing construction, stuff ain't pretty. You know it's not. A lot of times it's not pretty. So I go out there and I look at, I don't know if you know what floating is, but when you, when you build, um, when you start uh, building bricks on bricks, you have mortar that holds the bricks together, right? And so somebody, so then somebody comes behind them, uh -huh. and you know how when you sit a block on top of another, you know, on top of a block and it has mortar in between, sometimes some of that mortar comes out and spills out. Uh -huh. And so they have to take a, they have to take a, um, sponge. a sponge, uh -huh. a wet sponge, yeah. and smooth it out. Yeah. So I, so I, right. Uh -huh. So we, so when it comes to correction, he's just smoothing it out. God's just smoothing it out, just making us, making us look good. But the thing with that is. The look good has to be foundation level. The look good has to be on the inside. Has to come from the inside. Because you can be toe up on the inside and look good on the outside. But anyway, I will go out there and, and see some of, their, some of the people's float work. And I'm like, ew. That looks bad. That looks horrible. My husband like it ain't it don't necessarily have to look good because you're gonna put what over on the whatever stucco. what is stucco uh -huh. <laughs> stucco on it but I'm like okay well but why not make it pretty yes I mean why not <laughs> make it look like it could look uh -huh. anyway yeah so in other words why not receive the correction right. so that you can look how God wants you to look. So that's because we're made in his image and in his likeness. God look good. Right? Okay. Amen. So that's Amen. Come on, give God praise. <laughs> <That's it>. Wow. <laughs> what a word. What a word. What a word. What a word. So, I mean, just the one thing about that, 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 that level, sometimes there's a line that keeps us level. I just wanted to add to that because that was beautiful how you brought that out. <laughs> She said, sometimes you might have to tear it out, but other times you just, it might have to get pressed down. It might have to get dealt Pressure. with to get your, get your level, because we don't want to be out of balance. I don't want to be the only block in the wall that's crooked. Right? They got to tear it, it down then, because then of me. Then out and then you, they don't look right. So, you know what I mean? Then we got to cut it all out and, yeah, so... Sometimes God will allow a, an expert set of eyes to discern some things and say, wait a minute, that ain't right. Well, let's fix it. And then we keep on building. Amen. Come on, give God praise. Amen. Amen. I want to read something in your spirit real quick. In your spirit real quick. Just uh, read, listen to this. It says, some people give freely and gain more. Others refuse to give and end up with less. Give freely and you will profit. Help others and you will gain more. She talked about the seed. God will give you seed to sow. God blesses you. Why? So that we can be a blessing. Amen. Right? Till all the families of the earth are blessed. Right? God will allow us to help meet a need in the house, in the local assembly, to our brothers and our sisters. And sometimes it's a financial need. Sometimes there's needs in the house because we want to continue to do this work in the kingdom. 
We want to continue to do this work in the kingdom because you know what? There is a vision that the man and the woman of God of this house has, and that's to bring the word of God to this city, to help along with all the other pastors in this area. I, we are here to bring forth the word. There's plenty of people who are not saved and don't know the word of God, don't know Jesus. And you know what? I am coming under that vision, and I want to support this vision, and we want to take this vision and take this word to the masses. We're here. We're connected, just like our other brothers and sisters alongside us in the body. We are going as a unified front in this local assembly and in the universal body of Christ. And they have a vision here. And we, we say, you know what? I want to be connected to that. I want to be connected to that. And we bring ourselves and we bring our blessing and we bring our gift, our talent, and we bring our pocketbook. Amen? Amen? We're sowing where we're going, I heard somebody say one time. Amen? So listen, God, we just thank you right now. We thank you right now, Father God, for this ministry. We thank you, Father God, that you have called us to build. You called us to this local assembly. You called us uh, 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 to build the kingdom. We are kingdom builders. And we thank you, Father God, for the vision and the visionaries of this house. We thank you, Father God, that you have given us seed to sow. And we thank you, Father God, for the opportunity to be able to sow into good ground in the name of Jesus. We pray, Father God, that as we sow, we'll continue to see the abundant harvest in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, that that seed will come back to us, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, and men will give into our bosom. We thank you, Father God, for increase in our house and in this house. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, there's multiple ways that you can give. Of course, there's give the five. PayPal, give by text 863-777-5771, give by mail, and also cash out. Many ways that you can give, and you can also give. There's many people that's in the house, those of you who are online. You can use the QR code. You can also show up here on yes. Tuesday night. Show, show up, up in the house. It's nothing like being able to hear the word of God and praise like we do in the house. We do turn up here in the house. Praise God. We bless you. We thank God for you. Join us on Sunday at 1030. Uh, amen. Any other announcements? Any other announcements? I think that's all. I think that's all. God bless you. We love you. Have an abundant, abundant week. God bless you.